But how do we calculate flow rate? As we said, these are flow rate measurement devices, okay? Not pressure difference measuring devices. We want to work out flow rate. Well, to work out the flow rate, we first need to know what the velocity is that's going through the, uh, through the pipe. We need to know C, the fluid velocity. Now, last week we covered Bernoulli's equation, and now we're going to start using it. As I said, we use it all the time in fluid dynamics, okay? It's fundamental. And so we've got Bernoulli's equation, and obviously in Bernoulli's equation we've got some terms for C. Now, with our, with our Venturi meter, you'll notice that it was a horizontal system. And so we know that Z1 equals Z2, so those terms can be neglected. We don't need to worry about them. And so you end up with this version of Bernoulli's equation, which has the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. Okay? Now, let's see if we can solve for the velocities. Okay, well, obviously you move the velocity terms to one side and everything else to the other. So we end up with P1 minus P2 equals one half rho times the difference in the velocity squared. And so you can take out the one half rho and put it to the other side, and you end up with this term, C2 squared minus C1 squared equals two times the pressure difference over the density. Okay? Well, this is fine, but we don't, you know, we've got two unknowns. We don't know what C2 is, and we don't know what C1 is. Okay, so we need to try and put one in terms of the other, and then we can cancel them out, okay? Well, how can we do that? Well, we've got Bernoulli's equation here, but we need a second equation. Well, the second equation is our friend continuity, okay? So we look at the continuity equation, and we know that A, C is continuity, gives us V dot, and we know that A1, C1, which is the flow in the entrance to the pipe, is equal to the flow through the flow, through the throat of the pipe, A2, C2, okay? And so by rearranging this equation, you end up with C2 is A1 over A2, so the, the, the ratio of the areas multiplied by C2. Now, some of you eagle-eyed um, members of the audience might spot a small mistake in your notes. Yeah, there's a divided sign where there should be a multiply sign, okay? Um, if you look on page, I'll, I'll give you the page number so you can, you can check it. So this, this arrow is on page um, 34 in your notes, okay? And where it says, from the continuity equation for an incompressible fluid, yep, yeah, we've got A1, C1 equals A2, C2. And then it says, rearranging gives, okay? It says C2 equals C1 divided by A1 divided by A2. And that's wrong. It should be C1 multiplied by A1 divided by A2. And that's the same in the second line and the third line. They get it right in the fourth line, okay? Okay, so we've got continuity, and this will help us find the, other, the velocity, okay? So we know that C2 is related to C1 by the, the ratio of areas, and so C2 squared is obviously the square of the ratio of areas multiplied by C1 squared, okay? So this is what we want to stick in Bernoulli's equation. So there's Bernoulli's equation that we had on the previous slide. And we can replace C2 squared with the value that we've got here to do with continuity. So you stick that in. So we've got this equation. We can take C1 squared out of the, uh, the left-hand side of the equation. So there we go. Okay. So we've got C1 squared multiplied by the ratio of area squared minus 1 equals 2 times the pressure difference over the density. And obviously, we can move this, this uh, quantity, the ratio of area squared minus 1, to the other side. And so you divide both sides by that, and you end up with this equation. C1 squared equals 2 times the pressure difference divided by the density multiplied by A1 over A2 squared minus 1. Now, obviously, to get the velocity, we need to square root that. And so we can square root that, and that will give us what's known as the theoretical entry velocity. Okay. We'll cover why we call it the theoretical velocity in a second. Now, now we've got the velocity, obviously we can determine the flow rate. And we can determine both the volumetric flow rate and the mass flow rate. Now, the volumetric flow rate, we all know, is V dot equals AC. And so we we've got C here. We multiply that by the area. And we get V dot, okay, which is our volumetric flow rate. 
Now, the mass flow rate is just rho AC, yeah? The density multiplied by the volumetric flow rate. And so you can do the same thing again. The mass flow rate is rho AC. We've got our value for C here. And so you can stick that in. And you end up with these two equations. The volumetric flow rate with a venturi meter and the mass flow rate for a venturi meter. Okay? A1 is the pipe diameter, not the throat diameter. It's the pipe diameter. Okay? And it's the square root of 2 times the pressure difference over rho. And then we've got this term here. A1 over A2 squared minus 1 which is related to the area. And so A1 is the pipe diameter, A2 is the throat diameter, okay? And so the way you solve these problems is you use the, the equations that we covered earlier for the pressure difference to work out what this P1 minus P2 term is, okay? And by using the dimensions of the pipe, the throat and the, uh, and the pipe diameters, you can work out A1 and A2. You can square it and you can pop, pop that in. And from that you'll be able to work out the mass flow rate or the, vo or, the, or the volumetric flow rate, or indeed the velocity. Okay? Now, why do we call this the theoretical entry velocity or the theoretical flow rate? Well, that's because in these pipes, okay, there's going to be things that will affect how efficient they are. Okay? And essentially, these are the theoretical maximum flow rates and velocities, okay? but it, due to friction and losses, we actually have... Um, a, a difference. The, the actual flow rate is going to be less than the theoretical value. Okay, and that's called the, uh, that's due to friction and losses, and that's called the discharge coefficient, okay, which we call CD. Okay, now CD is some dimensionless number that basically relates the actual flow rate to the theoretical flow rate. Okay, obviously the actual flow rate has the, has the um, units of, say, meters cubed per second or kilograms per second, as does the theoretical flow rate. So the units cancel out, and so this is a dimensionless number. Okay? And with a venturi meter, the typical value is about 0.98. Venturi meters are generally quite efficient. Okay? So it's quite close to one, but it's not quite. And so we can actually sit down and work out the mass flow rate for the, this, and basically you just multiply the theoretical value by your coefficient. Okay? So we end up with Obviously, this you'll recognize as the theoretical mass flow rate. You put in CD, okay, and you end up getting, that's the equation. And this is the same thing, except for we've just taken the row out, put it in here, and obviously, obviously when, you put a row inside, when you put that inside the square root, you need to square it. And by squaring it, that actually cancels out this row. So you end up with this equation here. Okay? These are the same thing, this equation and this equation. And you can use either. It doesn't really matter. So we end up with the actual mass flow rate here, m dot, okay, by using the coefficient, the, uh, the discharge coefficient. Now, there's a useful little trick you can use that you'll use in your problems here, okay. Notice we've got a1 <coughs> divided by a2 squared. Well, that's... A, that's fine, you know, you can sit, generally you'll be given diameters in the questions, and so, the, 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 you know, you can sit and work out the areas, but you don't need to work out the areas if you don't want to. By knowing the relationship between area and the, and the diameter, okay, you can replace them. And so, we know that A1 over A2 squared is what we've got, okay? Now, the area in 1 is going to be pi d squared over 4, the area at 2 is pi d squared, d squared over 4 again, so all of that term needs to be squared, okay? Now, obviously, pi over 4 and pi over 4, well, they cancel each other out because we've got the same thing on the numerator and the denominator. So end up with d1 over d2 to the power of 4. And so in the equation, you can basically replace that a1 over a2 term, okay, with d1 over d2 to the power of 4, okay? So this is a lot more useful than, um, than trying to work out the areas, unless you're given the areas, in which case it's fine to use A1 over A2, okay? <clears throat> so, that's the Venturi meter. 